Welcome back. In this part, we'll cover the basics of zoning your city and generating buildings, parking lots, parks, and anything else your city needs. By the end of this video, we'll have a simple downtown area that we're ready to start detailing later on. The first thing we'll need to do is fill these empty spaces inside the roads with a block, something City Build can use to generate procedural content. We can do this either manually, like I'm doing now, or automatically, which I'll show you in a minute. For manual placement, I'll just align these spline points with the road edges. And that's it. We can now generate anything we want in this shape. Now I'll show you an easier way of doing it. In most cases, the city build can find these edges for you. I'll go up here and hit From Edges to highlight the edges that City Build detects. If I click on this edge, that will select it. I can now hit Control and click again to complete the loop. I'll go ahead and hit Enter to confirm the selection. This will create a new block aligned to the selection. In our case, the train is uneven, so the shape is hidden. Don't worry if this happens, it doesn't actually affect functionality. I'll go ahead and repeat this step for the entire downtown area. I'll also go into the landscape tool and make sure the terrain is beneath the blocks. All right, next step is to assign the districts. In city build, a district is where we define information like what types of buildings can we spawn? How can the land be used? What props can we spawn in the land? And also define what material our block shape uses, so we can set how the ground will look. For example, we can progressively increase the height of the buildings by assigning a high-rise district near the center of our city and a low-rise district near the outskirts. I'll go ahead and assign a district to this block here. We have a couple to choose from by default, but I'll go for this high-rise district here. I'll hit Assign, and we can see it change the material of our block shape. Now, without changing anything, we can hit Generate, which will spawn content based on the parameters that are set in the district. We can see that this operation has subdivided our block into smaller plots of land, and on some of them it spawned buildings, and on others it spawned parking lots or empty alleyways. These buildings are fully modular and adapt to the shape of the lot they are on. A lot in City Build is just a subdivision of a block. This parking lot is an example of a lot that has custom spawn rules. Let's take a look at lots in more detail. On this block, I'll subdivide the lots manually so we can see what's happening. I'll assign district and head down to the lot subdivision settings here. Let's use the offset subdivision method for now. This will create lots in a ring around the street at a given offset. We can adjust the offset here. With an offset of only 300, we get these super narrow lots. We'll want a higher number to give us more space to work with. Here, I've set the offset so high that the entire block is one lot. With a lower offset, we get more realistic shapes. Don't worry if they overlap the block a bit. This happens because the terrain is uneven. We can also set the subdivision method to single lot to fill the entire block. Let's switch over to the Buildings tab and assign a building style to this lot. This creates a new modular building aligned with our lot. The train is uneven, so we need to spawn a foundation to keep it from floating. We'll just check generate foundation here. This takes the foundation mesh defined in our building's mesh sets and adds it to the bottom of our building. Since our lot doesn't have any styling applied to it, we can go ahead and hide it. Now 
Let's fill in that gap with some steps for the Modern City Kits World Build Content folder. Districts don't always have buildings. One of the included examples is just the parking lot. When we assign it, we get an asphalt material, then if we hit generate, it will spawn the spaces and cars for us. We have one more method of spawning buildings, and that is to use the prefabs tool to place fully completed assemblies. I'll assign a district to this block and then switch to the prefabs tool. For this block, I want a single tower building. We can move it with the mouse and use the mouse wheel to rotate it. I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of the space with the trees. Using these same techniques, we can very quickly sketch out a basic downtown area. we finished the first pass of our downtown area. While we have the basic layout, it's not very detailed and there are some visual artifacts happening. We'll address all these things in the next few parts. For now though, we can explore this downtown area that we just generated in under an hour. With the setup work out of the way, the other areas will be much quicker to create. Rather than expand to those areas immediately, we'll focus on taking this downtown area to final quality. I'll see you in part five.